Now I would like to give the floor to Mr. Fabio Caserali, who will give us a, um, a presentation as the chairman and founding member of Systematica from Milan. Thank you. Good morning. My report today will examine four themes. The possible effects of an integrated and synergetic use of macro and micro mobility. The planning effects of policies emphasizing the concept of proximity. The role of accessibility in urban form. Not working? and the rapid actions which can be taken in cities. It's not working so, so, so well. First of all, sorry, strange things. Yeah. Fabio, if you just say next, and then if uh, the team could just press the button, please. This one. Okay. First of all, we will look uh, at uh, the integrated uh, mobility based on a model we implemented in Paris. The concept is based on a number of assumptions. Citizens uh, are always looking for door-to-door -door connections. The problem of, is to how to cover the first and the last mile. The adopted solutions must be integrated with existing systems of transport and not generate competition. Very importantly, the concept of public does not always need to be associated with the concept of collective, but can also be conceived as public individual. Paris today, like most metropolis, presents a classic monocentric configuration with highly density in the center and progressive sprawl towards the periphery. A well-articulated mobility network provides not only improved accessibility, but also a profound urban transformation, generating a multipolar city without denying space to the light city. Intense polarities are generated along the new orbital connections, which finally break the monocentric layout of the French capital. The outer ring, in particular, is set up with a bus rapid transit system to be built leg by leg and to be replaced by a metro or a railway line if successful. The presence of the BRT system will progressively transform the marginal external areas, offering new inter-suburban exchange stations without having to pass through the center of the city. These images show examples of dense polarities, potentially multifunctional, which can be created via buildings or by large parks. The public transport stations will have not only a technical function, but they will also be a powerful catalyst for new urban polarities. The term Proximity, the term proximity, the term proximity requires innovative thinking in terms of spatial relation. 
It is in this light, it is in this light city, existing or under construction, where new mobility solutions need, okay, need to be found capable of uh, substituting the classical gravitation of the commuters toward the center of the city with shorter and quicker trips. The purple dots and small strips of light that appear on the screen synthesize this type of special relationship. The idea is to start from the main transport system, regional, railway, metros, and BRT, that you can see with the, the um, white lines, and distribute inside a reasonable area several eco-stations represented by the yellow dots in the picture. For those traveling longer distances, it will be possible to hire ecologically friendly means of transport in every eco station. To complete the journey in line with the door to door principle, the widespread distribution of eco stations will provide transport even to citizens who live and work in the same area, increasing the value of proximity according to the principle of public individual mobility. To the residents or city users who cannot or will not use this individual means of transport, a small and ecological system of collective public transport will be offered. The service will be organized according to appropriate loops, thus covering the whole territory and offering the same travel opportunities to all. In the future, these systems could be completely driverless, like this experimental means of transport that we can see here in the south of France, Antibes, and already in use in Rotterdam. To be honest, this kind of vehicle will need some intervention by the good designer because in my in my mind, this is really horrible, but it's working. These images show the structure of the light city. Having good connections, both macro and micro, allows work on the topic of retrofitting the outskirts, offering valuable new opportunities for urban functions. Once more, showing that town and transport planning must be looked at as a wall. Berlin, Auckland, Perth and Milan have good examples of mixed use environments. Accessibility is a key issue in town and transport planning. I did many studies on this item and I hope the following images are able to underline the positive effects of the macro and micro mobility. Les Mureaux is a peripheral area of Paris with a very poor accessibility today. In yellow, you can see the area accessible by public transport in 45 minutes. With the future investments dedicated to the macro mobility, 
say, metro lines, the result is good, but not so exciting in terms of interperipheral connections. Only an orbital BRT system supported by micromobility will be able to change radically the accessibility from and to Les Mureaux, improving the opportunities to move their qualified urban functions. At the moment, I'm suggesting this theory in four cities, Paris, London, Milan, and Rome. The last point uh, I wish to underline is the correlation uh, between rising per capita income and the number of car ownership. Istanbul today has a relatively low number of cars for every thousand inhabitants and it is not difficult to foresee a rise in this ratio in the coming years. If congestion today is already very consistent, the risk that it will grow significantly in the future is real. Many interventions aimed at enhancing the transport network are already in progress, and uh, many others are being studied, even if they will produce significant effects only in the medium term. What is possible to do immediately? I will be just a little provocative to stimulate to debate the debate. I suggest four rapid actions. Today, Istanbul has eight kilometers of reserved lanes for public transport for every million inhabitants. Madrid has 92, Rome 108, Paris 152, London 176. The action I pro I'm proposing is to increase reserved lanes for public transport. Bogota, a well-known case, has reduced the public transport travel, ta travel time by one-third and emissions by 40% and accidents along the transmillennial routes by 90%. Istanbul today has 167 car spaces on the park and ride for every million inhabitants. Madrid has 3,700. Milan, 13,000. I suggest capturing the demand near the region. In Madrid, this practice has allowed for a reduction of rush hour traffic within the city by around 20,000 cars. In Istanbul today, the capacity of the existing Bosphorus bridges is more or less 12,000 vehicles per hour and per direction, say about 12,000 people. The delays for crossing the Bosphorus are really huge, so I suggest the daily use of alternative odd even number plates and to reserve a couple of lanes in each bridge for a BRT. In Beijing, during the Olympic Games, the measure suspended about 2 million vehicles, cutting 63% of total motor vehicle emissions. As soon as the limitations were removed, traffic doubled. In addition, in Istanbul, we can say that the two BRT lines could have a capacity of about 24,000 passengers per hour and per direction, exactly twice of the road capacity, but using one, led, one lane instead of four. In Istanbul today, cycle lanes are practically unexistent. 
I know that the orography here is complicated, but I suggest building where reasonable a cycle network and supporting the purchase of electric bicycles. In Paris, the Velib system has 170,000 subscribers and is used 41 million times a year by citizens and city users. We can affirm that simple measures can have a strong effect, but their application requires brave decision makers. A couple of days ago, looking at Istanbul from the top of its uh, tallest skyscraper, I had an idea, which is the quicker way to connect the top of the hills to the plain, is it? A direct line. It is a medium term action, I'm suggesting, but potentially interesting. I think that it's possible to build several escalators connecting hills to the plain. As you can see in these beautiful images, if you cannot see, if you can see beautiful images of Barcelona. Or we have a similar story in Naples where a romantic Napolitan song describes the value of the long stairs inside the city. Funiculars, as in Genoa or Lisbon or in Hong Kong, or in Istanbul itself, are another interesting mode of transport to take into consideration. This is Genoa, where the funicular is working under the sun and in the winter time, too. The idea, I'm finishing, the idea of suspended cable cars in my opinion, is not so good for many reasons. The strong impact on the landscape, the passive risk of many technical stops for the wind, the active risk for helicopters and small aircraft. I'm concluding my speech with a question for discussion. Do you think possible to have a mobility renaissance in Istanbul too? Thank you very much for your kind attention.